Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're wrapping up our multiplayer unit tier list series for Total War Three Kingdoms with the yellow units, or the melee cavalry tier list. So before we get started with our overview of all the units from the cheapest to the most expensive, we need to first define the role of yellow units. And unfortunately, here is where things get rather complicated. In single player campaigns, melee cavalry are excellent range counters and oftentimes act as an arrow sponge to weaken AI controlled range units and waste their ammo. However, in multiplayer, this role does not exist as any sane human player would never waste their ammo on melee cavalry, which has the 50% damage resistance to all range damage. Therefore, yellow units or melee cavalry sort of don't have a identity or defined role here in multiplayer as they are worse than shot cavalry, both in terms of charge bonus and weapon damage. So it is almost always better to recruit shot cavalry in place of melee cav. So with this in mind, please don't be surprised if we end up ranking most of the melee cavalry rather poorly in our tier list, as these tier lists should not be seen as a relative strength tier list of how strong units are within the yellow subgroup, but a rather comprehensive and holistic tier list judging whether the unit is viable in multiplayer setting across all the units in the game. So with this said, let's get started with the Bandit Marauder at 432 cost. Alrighty, so if we take a look at the Bandit Marauder at 432 cost, very weird number, but regardless, it's obviously available on Bandit units, and we have a very low charge unit at 99 charge, 30 morale, the damage is actually decent, 20 attack speed, 13, 30 split, with the armor piercing being 30. Decent defensive stat, pretty fast unit. Obviously, since it is a bandit unit, there's a chance for Yan Bai Hu to recruit it, so you could make it invisible. But the problem, once again, comes to identity. If we're simply looking for a unit with good weapon damage, then we wouldn't want a melee cavalry, because we're paying for only one quarter of the units. Just bring a melee infantry. Many of them actually have higher charge than 99. So if you're going to be a cavalry unit with only one quarter size, aside from having high speed, you need to have high charge bonus. Because if you don't have the high charge bonus, it doesn't matter how good your weapon is. There's only 30 of you, you're not going to dish out that much damage. So these units definitely struggle in that department. Then moving on to the Mounted Saber Militia, we see a unit that finally have its 65% range block chance, which is what basically make Melee Cavalry Famous in Campaign, because you can also boost this on your commanders to up to 85% plus the 50% missile resistance. Pretty much enemies will just waste all their range damage on your Melee Cavalry. However, in multiplayer, this is not the case. And if we look at all the other stats, we have 143 charge. It's a lot better than 99, but still quite weak compared to other Shock Cavalry. The weapon damage, because they use sword and shield, it's a lot less than the spear variants from the shock cavalry as well. And if you compare them to melee units that also use swords and shield, you only end up with a quarter of them at this price, so it's not even that great there. So once again, it just really lacks identity that you can latch onto for it to be picked in multiplayer. Then continue at 500, we have the Mounted Saber Defector. This is the yellow turban variant, and if you look at the stats here, Slightly more morale, slightly more charge, same weapon, slightly less evasion, and the rest are pretty much the same at the same cost. It's finally one of the few defector units that's better than its replacement, which is the Mounted Saber Militia. Then we also have the Yellow Turban Horseman. Now this unit is unique to the original Yellow Turban DLC instead of the Drown Brother, which uses the Mounted Saber Defectors. For this one here, it's going to cost you 550, so a slight premium for less morale, less charge, less attack speed, slightly higher weapon damage, but not really, at a much lower speed, even though the armor does go up to 20%, which is why it's dropped to 75 speed. But overall, not such a great unit because of all the deficiencies in stats compared to its other cheaper options here, but it is the first unit here that can use formations, and sometimes using wedge does help with certain charges. But once again, if you're looking for a good charge, shock cavalry is the way to go. Then continue at 550, we have the Jadza Raiders. So these units are actually quite premium. If you look at their stats, we have 60 morale, 234 charge, 53% armor, top of the line stats across the board, 
the problem here is there are only 16 of them. So they're not even quarter size, they're almost one eighth in size. Not exactly one eighth, but slightly higher. It's a really weird number to pick with 16. So the problem becomes, sure, all the stats are extremely premium, but there's only 16 of you. And that's a huge problem. You charge 16 cavalry into a group of 120 infantry, you're not gonna make it very far. And looking at the damage, weapon damage, given that it still uses a sword, is still quite low with 1914 distribution. Even though across the board, the stats are excellent, it's just the unit size is way too small in this unit, and that's the problem for Dazzler Raiders. Then moving up to 650 to 775, we start off with the Messengers of Heaven for 650, and this unit is unique to Zhang Jiao. And this unit have the opposite problem as the Dazzler Raiders. It has double unit size, which is excellent, and it has really good weapon damage. 21 attack speed, 32-23. The charge isn't really there, but it has high morale and high health. The defensive stats terrible, and there's not a lot of range protection on this, but that's not a problem because range is really not a concern in multiplayer, at least compared to campaign. It has top end speed because it didn't have the heavy armor. So this is an excellent unit, one of the few units that I consider potentially usable in multiplayer because it can match the damage of many of the shock cavalry even. The melee charge is missing, but there are a lot of shock cavalry actually that uses the Z, which is a 20 attack speed, 23, 23 damage. So you actually have higher damage than them. And because you have double their unit size, you have more people hitting them at the same time. And with the extremely high morale, these units are almost unbreakable and they also cause scare. And even though it's only 20% range block chance, you still have the 50% missile resistance and access to all sorts of formations. This is an excellent unit for cavalry and something that we'll definitely consider putting pretty high on our tier list. But the good news pretty much stops there as we jump to 690 for the Northern Saber Cavalry. Not much charge bonus and very low morale. Heavily armored, but sacrificing speed for that. So in the end, it ends up being the same situation where it's not as strong as shock cavalry, for a cavalry roll, and it's not as strong as melee infantry for an infantry roll. And that's going to be the same problem for the next two units as well, Saber Cavalry and Dull Swords Guard Cavalry. So Saber Cavalry is the upgraded version for the Hun Generals, and the Dull Sword Guard Cavalry is the upgraded version for the Eight Princes Generals. And if we take a look at the stats, they're pretty similar. Uh, the Saber Cavalry is going to be much better in terms of morale and charge, it has a little bit less weapon damage, but it's only five points of base damage, so it's not a huge difference. Defensively speaking, the Dull Sword Guard edges out slightly with very weird numbers, so 6% more evasion and 1% more armor for some reason, and they have the same speed as 75. So very, very similar units. I would give the advantage to Saber Cavalry as they have more morale as well as more charge, and if you look at the cost, they're also a little bit cheaper at 750 versus 775. Not to mention that they're available on more generals because the Dahl Sword Guard's only available for commanders that are eight princes. So there's not even that many of those. Then jumping to 800 to 900, we have some more unique units starting with the Handmade Guard. This is for Wu Faction. And this is an excellent unit just because it has guard, very similar to Tiger Guard. Uh, where Tiger Guard's not very strong for its price compared to regular Spear Guards, but because the Guard passive can help you protect your General, especially considering that I mostly play on Romance mode, this makes a huge difference in terms of keeping your General alive so they can do more rounds of their abilities or just dishing out damage against enemy Generals. This slight advantage of 25% damage resistance is huge. In terms of just the raw unit stat, the morale is actually pretty good at 46. Charge is very average and damage is very average for the weapon. Speed is okay at 75 because you do get 26% armor and 30% evasion is not that bad. So overall, quite a good unit just because it has the guard passive. Then moving on, also at 800, we have the Tiger Guard. This is unique to Tall Tall's faction. And if we look at the stat, it has worse morale than the Handmade Guard, slightly higher charge, better weapon damage, whether we're talking about speed or total damage, 23.8. Uh, the attack speed is going to make up for the difference in terms of armor piercing difference. The defensive stats are a lot better because they do carry a shield, but somehow the shield's not very good at blocking range at only 45%. It's still going to be one of those average melee cavalry that doesn't really have a role in the army in multiplayer. 
Then the Zen Sword Guard is sort of the more expensive cousin of the Dull Sword Guard we've seen earlier or the Saber Cav and it has very, very similar stats compared to those units. Also the 26% armor. So we know where the Dull Sword Guard got their value. Not much to say here. Moving up to 850, however, we have Liu Chong's unique unit, the Chen Peacekeepers. This is a dual weapon user. So while they use the sword and shield, which is an excellent sword and shield apparently at 24, 26, 20, pretty high armor piercing damage there. They also carry a bow with them. It's a crossbow. So the damage is 18, 24, very high. Decent enough ammo at 17, range is 220. They're slow because they're extremely heavily armored. 53% armor and the shield, as we mentioned, the shield and sword is very good quality. 27% additional armor from that shield for a total of 80% armor on these units. Add up the evasion, you also have 50% evasion, good weapon damage, decent enough charge, and you also have 60 points of morale. These units are amazing. So basically they have the strength of the melee cavalry where they can counter range a little bit. They're not the fastest, so you're not going to really utilize their crossbow as sort of a kiting unit. Think of them as frontline crossbow units that can charge out and tank up enemy range as well. That's really how you should use them. If you have them running around, they can get caught off by enemy shot cavalry, and they don't do extremely well against those because they have high armor piercing damage, and that's going to take away your 80% armor advantage. It's better off to keep them on your front line, fight enemy melee infantry with these. They will do quite well. If you can kite them out of enemy formation after a frontal charge to go behind them and shoot from behind, that's even better. Then 900, we have the upgraded Northern Veteran Saber Cavalry. So you're basically paying 210 extra for about 10 points of morale, about 30 points of charge, same exact weapon, and just a couple more percentage in terms of evasion and about 13% armor boost, and you lose speed at the same time. So it's one of those very standard heavy and light unit trade-offs at a higher price here in multiplayer, and I don't give it a lot of value because you have units like the Chen Peacekeeper, which just outclasses it in terms of all sorts of stats at a cheaper cost as well. Certainly, there are restrictions where Liu Chong is the one who can recruit Chen Peacekeepers, but Liu Chong is a very powerful general in his own right with his show of force, so there should be no problems there. And then finally, we arrive at the top end from 1000 to 1200. And at 1000, we have the Tiong Raiders. So like all Tiong Cavalry, they have fatigue immunity. If you look at the stats, we finally broke the 200 mark for the charge bonus, which is very nice. The weapon damage is not high, but you do have very high attack rate of 35. The morale is a tad low, but still above 30. And the defensive stats uh, are not that high, but you retain your speed this way. So that's one major advantage. However, the problem with these town units here is would you recruit these or would you recruit town hunters or perhaps even town marauders? I think you've had to compare the three. These might be at the bottom of the list, given that they also cost the most compared to the other two. And of course, all three of these units are available in the same exact generals, Ma Chao, Ma Teng, Sima Ying, and Han Sui. So the choice is pretty apparent. Then moving up, we have the Xiong Nu Noble Cavalry. This is a unique unit for Yuan Shao's faction. And if you look at the stats, slightly higher morale compared to the Town Raiders at the same cost, a little bit less charge. And the weapon damage is higher, but the weapon attack rate is lower. Armor-wise, it's better, but you're losing speed. The shield quality is interesting in that it has more armor on it, but less protection against range. So that's a tad weird, but overall, very similar units, uh, no fatigue immunity obviously weakens it quite a bit in terms of lasting a long time in combat, but overall, pretty average unit. Then we also have the Virtuous Nobleman. This is an axe-wielding melee cab. This is not the only axe-wielding melee cab because the Bandit Marauder also uses axe, so you do get shield break if you're against shielded infantry, for example, or other shielded cavalry unit. We can eliminate the bonus stat from the shield by 35%, I believe. Just the raw stat, 50 morale is quite nice. 154 charge at this price level is a crime, but because they use an axe, their armor piercing damage is much higher. They have the 45% armor there, so 62 speed, all that seems pretty fair. But it is worth noting that once again, this is a weird yellow turban unit with 21 unit size rather than the 30. So we're at 70% of what all the other cavalry get. If you value the axe damage, might as well go with the Axe Infantry. At this price level, you can get a Yellow Dragon 
with much higher charge, almost twice the charge, with less defensive stats, but almost the same foot speed, really, if you consider the charge bonus, and with much higher damage availability to use different formations. So you see the problem with a lot of these units. It's just there's a better option out there. But of course, there's always the Imperial option at 1200, the Imperial Household Cavalry. With the Imperial Solidarity bonus, the armor piercing damage can go up to 24, which makes it a lot better. 1924, 24 attack rate is very respectable. 263 charge is decent. 80 morale after the bonus, not bad. And of course, melee evasion goes all the way up by another 10%. With the shield, it's actually massive. It's going to be 88% and the armor is going to be 63%. So this is a very tanky unit and definitely worth considering because of these stats. You can mix and match them perhaps with your other Imperial options, especially including one along with your Lancers since they're available on the same general of He Jin and Huang Fu Song. It wouldn't be too hard to mix and match unlike a lot of other melee units which are only available on commanders. And perhaps in that situation, since you can recruit them on the same general with the Imperial Lancer option, you can actually use your Missile Resistant for some good use. Because for many of other instances, the reason why we've been talking about the choices and the lack of identity is you have to pick a Commander General to get many of these units. And if you pick the Commander General, you give up on a lot of good quality shot cavalry units or good quality purple infantry units that you could have recruited from a Sentinel or a Vanguard. So you're making a lot of different choices here in multiplayer, and I just don't think melee cavalry overall is a good choice. But with all that said, that's the overview. We're going to jump back to the tier lists and rank all these units. Alrighty, so this is not going to be very hard. We're going to start from the top, like usual. And at the very top, we have the Messenger of Heaven. They're picked because they have extremely high speed since they forego armor, double unit sides, extremely high morale, actually decent charge and decent damage so i think they can actually have a role in multiplayer especially since the 50 percent damage resistance is really all you want you don't really care about the block chance that much then joining them we have the handmade guard so these have the guard passive the unit itself is not impressive we're really only giving an s tier because it's available on all the wu generals and including one in your team or two it's definitely worth it just to help you protect your generals. They're better than Tiger Guards because they have the speed to keep up with your generals. And if you're fighting away from your main army, you can still make sure your general has the very nice guard passive to keep them alive. And then finally, also in S tier, we have the Chen Peacekeepers from Liu Chong. Uh, these units are just top tier at this price level. To have this high armor, having a bow option definitely gives them a more unique identity, especially since it's a crossbow. They have decent enough damage. Certainly the charge bonus is not going to match that of Shot Cavalry, but it's decent enough to use. You want to have these as a tanky option to perhaps deal with enemy range cavalry, but you just got to watch out not to get overwhelmed by faster Shot Cavalry that can get on top of you due to your low speed and they can bypass your extremely high armor with their armor piercing lances. Then continuing to the A tier, I have no one. And that's the same for B tier as well. I don't think any of these units really have Sort of any justification why they can get in those tiers but in the c tier which i still think is viable we have two units starting with the town raiders so town raiders like all the other town units have fatigue immunity which allows them to kite out and be successful the longer the battle goes especially near the end when they can stay fresh they have decent enough stats but the weakness becomes you have other options for town hunters and town marauders where this unit might not be your first choice now, because they're available on generals that can recruit those other two options, including one, just to have a flexibility of tanking some enemy range damage, might still give them a place in multiplayer. And for that exact same reason, we're also going to include the Imperial Household Cavalry. Because the generals who can recruit this also can recruit the Imperial Lancer Cavalry. And mixing and matching these definitely has its benefits, offer you more flexibility, the solidarity bonus is something that works with all Imperial units, so mixing and matching doesn't hurt that bonus at all, and they can have a specialized role in a cavalry unit as a collective. But that's going to do it for our tier list. All the remaining melee cav I think are really not viable options in multiplayer, and they're all going to derank. There are a couple pretty interesting ones, like the Jazz Riders or Raiders are 
quite cheap for the amount of armor and stat they bring, but unfortunately there's only 16 of them. And for the axe-wielding virtuous nobleman yellow turban unit, certainly they feel pretty interesting as well in terms of their stat offering, but once again, only 21 of them. That's the main problem. If they had 60 units like the Mess from Heaven, they would be on S tier as well, but they're not. So they're going to end up in D tier, and they're not really usable in multiplayer, at least in my opinion. And that's going to do it for our multiplayer unit tier list, not only for the yellow units, but for all five colors as we have wrapped up the series here. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this series and maybe encourage you to check out multiplayer as our first ever tournament so far has been a blast to cast and quite a lot of fun to watch. So there definitely will be more tournaments in the future and hopefully I'll see all you guys there. So until then, bye!